Hey everybody, it's Andy with RS Experience and today I'm going to review this 2017 C7 Corvette Grand Sport. This is actually the collector's edition. This is my first ever review of a Corvette and the first time I'm gonna drive a Corvette. I really can't believe that. So stay with me as I walk around and show you the exterior. We talk about the interior and take this thing out for a ride. Stay to the end and I'll give you my final thoughts on the C7 Corvette. Hey, I'm Andy, a high performance car enthusiast with a passion for well-engineered automobiles. I love to drive mountain roads with like-minded enthusiasts, along with sharing driving tips and techniques. The C7 Corvette was produced from 2014 to 2019. This particular 2017 model is the Grand Sport and it's a collector's edition. So what's a collector's edition? So there's a few things that distinguish this from other cars. One is we have these tension blue hash marks on the front fenders, as well as tension blue uh, leather inserts on the interior and an embossing on the headrests on the inside of the car. This particular collector edition is in Watkins Glen gray metallic. Corvette GM made 850 of these designated for the US. And this particular one is number 835. The 2017 C7 made car and driver's 10 best list in 2017. The 2017 Grand Coupe is powered by a 6.2 liter V8 engine producing 460 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. It came with either an eight-speed automatic, which is in this car, or a seven-speed manual transmission. The C7 Corvette has an 18 and a half gallon fuel tank. The Grand Sport Corvette will do zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds and has a hot top speed of 195 miles an hour. The Grand Sport Coupe weighs in at 3,428 pounds or 1,555 kilograms. The starting price for the C7 Corvette was $66,445, but you could easily, with options, probably get this thing into the high 80s, close to $90,000. Let's take a look at the front of the car. Okay, in the, in the Grand Sport model, they actually have the front end that's very similar to the Z06 edition. We have a little bit different front fascia down along the bottom here. Actually, this lower splitter, the owner of this car actually had it painted to match the body color of the car. I think it looks really good. The other thing you'll notice here is the tension blue put on the um, logo here. Also on the front hood here, we can see um, vented to escape some of the heat out of the back. So as the air comes in the front, we can evacuate some of it there. We also have a matte stripe um, on the hood. So the wheelbase on the C7 Corvette Coupe is 106.7 inches. Um, just for reference, that's almost two inches longer than the uh, 600 LT that I drive. The overall length is 176.9 inches and the height is at 48.6 inches. Uh, give you an idea, the uh, McLaren comes in at 47 inches. Okay, let's talk a little bit about tires and wheels. So the Corvette actually has a staggered setup, has 19 by 10 inch wheels up front and 20 by 12s in the rear. The front has a 28530 Michelin Pilot Super Sport, and the rear is a 33525. They're huge um, in the rear wheels. <laughs> so, with regard to braking, we have a 14.6 inch or 370 millimeter rotor up front, iron rotor with a six piston caliper. In the rear, we have a 14.4 inch. Uh, rotor or 365 millimeters and it has a four piston caliper. The Corvette actually has a pretty decent amount of storage. There's 15 cubic feet or 425 liters. You can definitely get several, you're not going to get a real uh, thick bag in there, but 
some carry-on bags, golf clubs, etc., will actually fit in there pretty good. The other thing I want to point out is that the Grand Sport actually come with this quad exhaust, which is really kind of cool with a lot of cars. They have, um, you know, we know the Porsche GT cars have the, the uh, twin uh, center exhaust uh, tips. Uh, we've got the Ferrari 458 had three we have some of the new lexus have a um have a three which is really kind of cool uh, this is for this particular one is an aftermarket this has a coarse exhaust similar to the front you see the blue insert here on this logo on the back and that is um, also uh, aftermarket because again i think chevrolet on the st stock i think it was red kind of interesting but anyway, the rear of the car, some people like this square headlights versus the older Corvettes had the round, but I think on the C7 Corvette, matching the other angles of the rest of the car, I actually like the way they are. And on here, they are also um, smoked out. Okay, let's talk about the interior of the car. So as I said earlier, this we have these tension blue inserts up here on the dash, on the sides and the bolstering of the seat on the center console here. It actually makes a pretty nice touch on the interior of the car. We can also see it on the armrests um, inside the door. So the Corvette comes with, uh, had two types of seats, had a standard seat, which I think these are, and they're powered. And we also have uh, carbon fiber racing seats. These seats are actually cooled and heated, which is a nice, factor inside the car we have some carbon fiber we have a gloss carbon fiber here on the center console we have matte carbon fiber up along and outlining the dash the corvette comes with the chevrolet i think it's my link uh, infotainment system came standard with apple carplay and android auto as well as sirius xm the interesting thing this rear view mirror is actually nice it's kind of a frameless mirror i like the shape and size of it it also has your OnStar and things in the top. The only thing that, looking out the rear window, and you'll see in a photo, there's, there's not a lot of visibility out the rear, but the side mirrors give you excellent visibility, so that works out um, pretty well. Okay, next let's talk about the steering wheel. We have controls for the MyLink as well as um, your cruise control on the wheel. The other thing down here on the dash, we actually have a little plaque that says collector edition number 835, so you know what number build your car was. The dash is um, actually pretty neat on the display. It will change based on if you're in Econo, Touring, Sport, or Track modes. Uh, which gives you some visibility. And then this particular car has a heads up display and I'm really impressed with the clarity of the head up display with the RPMs and the speed, the clarity, the resolution, as you would say, is really good. This particular car has aftermarket uh, paddle shifter extensions. Again, this is manual, uh, automatic, but you can put it in manual and then use the shifter paddles to change the gear. This has you know, a lot of standard features like memory uh, for the seats, as well as your lighting controls for exterior. The interesting thing on the door is to get out, it's actually a button as opposed to a pull handle or a strap. Everybody does something a little differently. This one actually has a button that you push. It's actually pretty easy. I had never seen a button before, but I kind of like it because it's, it's just really easy to open up the inside of the car. Uh, inside we have, uh, you know, the cup holders here, we have glove box and you have some storage in the doors. And again, I showed you the back already. The other thing that's kind of nice is up above, we actually have this, I don't know, it's like a plexiglass or something, but it's, it's tinted, dark tinted, clear top. This is a, I don't know if they call this a T-top, but this roof is removable. So it kind of gives you that open air driving if you like. Uh, without necessarily having the convertible. Uh, I like this touch. It gives some nice light inside the car. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. It helps me to grow the channel and I appreciate you watching. Okay, let's take the C7 Corvette out for a drive and I'll give you my thoughts. So visibility out the front is, is really good. I was a little concerned with having the long hood 
uh, since I'm so used to like the McLaren just drop straight to the road that that was going to be an issue, but it's a non-issue. Uh, so the visibility is good. The mirrors out of either side, they're far enough away from the body, you get good visibility. And as I talked about a little bit earlier, the view out the rear is a little narrow, but you know, in the scheme of things of other cars that I've driven, it's really not that bad. The nice thing is you don't have the wings not really blocking your visibility like those of you that have some of the Porsche GT cars, such as GT3, you know that wing sits right in the middle. So I actually think the visibility is pretty good. And then the other thing, as I pointed out earlier, I really like this uh, clear top here that really brings some nice light into the cabin. The weighting of the steering feels pretty good. You can tell it's got a little bit of weight to it. Um, and that may change even on the, the modes. Like right now, I'm actually in sport mode. So that may tighten it up. Let me go to touring mode and see like maybe just a little bit looser uh, not quite as heavy uh, but it, it the steering feels pretty good feedback in the steering wheel I can feel a little bit of the front end but I'm not pushing the car real hard and nor am I going to it's not my car uh, but I think the feel through the wheel feels pretty good as, as far as how much input you have to give, um, it feels pretty good. You don't have to give a lot of input. I feel like um, just a little bit of input and the car is, I can definitely feel the car is turning. Um, and some of that is gonna be due to a lot of the systems today are um, electronically assisted. So that makes them a little bit faster sometimes. So you just have to be careful on how much turn, how much uh, hand you put into the wheel. So that feels pretty good. I want to talk a little bit about this heads-up display. I mentioned something earlier, but this heads-up display, this resolution is really good. It's really clear. So it's giving me RPM, it's giving my, me my gear, it's giving me my speed. And then the other thing, it took me a little bit to figure out what it was, but it's actually giving, reading out the G's. So your G-forces are there as well. So as you're braking or as you're turning. So the brakes on the car, the modulation and with in the pedal feels pretty good. They're not grabby or touchy as you know I've said on the M2CS, those brakes are really grabby. These brakes here um, feel good. You can tell they're boosted a little bit um, as opposed to like when I'm driving in the McLaren, it, it's not uh, as boosted, but I can still uh, modulate uh, the brake feel, feels pretty good. We want to talk about power. So we've had this straight away here. It has plenty of power, but what do you expect from a 6.2 liter V8 with 460 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque? The modulation, it's not real touchy, so you, you, know, you give it the gas. If it feels very linear. Again, a lot of that is due to a naturally aspirated engine. You're not waiting for anything to spool up and get you going. Uh, so I, I like the feel of the throttle so the weight of this car right it's 3428 pounds it's actually a little bit lighter by probably 100 pounds than the m2 cs if you can believe that uh, but I'm, I'm still getting a little used to turn in and the suspension it doesn't feel unsettling at all it's not making me nervous i'm just trying to feel where kind of that like getting those front wheels set and into the turn and then giving gas through the apex and onto the exit let me get a feel for that here come up on this turn let's break into the turn get to settle the nose come off back to the gas yeah being smooth i think this car rewards smooth inputs I imagine if you're real herky-jerky with the, the brakes and whatnot, that may uh, throw off, you know, but again, that's like any car. If you're not real smooth, uh, you could um, throw the balance of the car off. So what are my thoughts first time driving a Corvette? Um, 
I'll say I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but it's a little bit different than what I expected. The power feels good, but it's not crazy power. It's not like you're hitting it and it's like, oh my God, hold on. Uh, and maybe if you're driving a ZR1, you know, with 700 and something horsepower, maybe that feels it. But I think this power in this car is really probably a sweet spot at like 460 horsepower. It's not super crazy. It's very linear. I don't think this power is going to get you in trouble like maybe some of the other um, models of the Corvette would. So from that standpoint, it's good. The only thing I would want is more time in the car to get a feel for the suspension and the handling. I would think, you know, probably a day of driving this car, you probably get an idea of its characteristics and how it feels. Again, you gotta remember me, I'm driving either a rear engine car in the Porsches. Yes, the M2 is up front and then the McLaren's mid-engine. So this one is, you know, more of the weight and the engine's up front. So it's just a little different feeling. Uh, that's all. It's not that it's good or bad. It's just a different sensation. And how do you manage driving that car um, with the engine up in the front? So here I am with the owner of the car, Tracy, uh, is here. And so I just thought we would take a few minutes and get a perspective from the owner on this 2017 C7 Corvette. So Tracy came from a BMW M3. That's right. So yeah. tell us about this transition from BMW to Corvette. How did how did you make that transition and, you know? Gotcha. Well, yeah, it uh, uh, most certainly the two cars, for instance, are very different. And I, I really hate comparing the two cars simply because, you know, the technology in this Corvette, uh, being it's a 2017, the technology is is really uh, doesn't match the technology that was in my BMW M3. It was an E92, uh, 2011. Um, so you know, I, I, it's it's hard to really kind of compare the two. But what I will say uh, is some of the things, like for instance, one of the big things that I really loved about my BMW, uh, my M3, was that it was a uh, stick, a six feet, a six speed manual transmission, and that car was just so much fun to drive. So it did take me that that was a little bit of a transition when I bought this car um, you know considering this car is an automatic um, and it does have the paddle shifters which don't get me wrong the paddle shifters are fun but if I would if I would have to say the one thing I really don't like about this car is the paddle shifters believe it or not and that's only from the perspective of it seems like there's a little bit of a delay so there's two things that I really love about the car obviously the performance I think Andy you had mentioned earlier you know it, it's basically 460 horsepower and uh, it's the, the performance in this car is just amazing uh, and I feel I think another uh, another thing in terms of not only the performance but it's just so planted when I drive the car um, I feel like I'm in control like the car will do exactly what I want it to do uh, and I think at times and again I think it, it more of it was just the technology I, I guess I didn't feel as much of control that control that I feel in this car that I did in my M3 Is that right? so yeah yeah the re response with the brakes is just phenomenal I mean, now definitely that, that that's a big difference from my M3 to this car. It just seems like that, uh, you know, the moment that I mash these brakes, I mean, it's it's just instant. Yeah. So. Yep. So there you go, folks. Um, you got my kind of take on it when I was driving the car, and then you got the information. Oh, now Tracy's getting it. <laughs> then you, you, you got uh, from the owner's perspective how she feels about the car. So thank you again for allowing me to uh, review and drive your car. It was my first Corvette. Um, so thank you for that. And for folks, as always, thank you for watching. And as always, stay healthy and stay safe.